Hello everybody, good morning for the very final time. This is the Wimbledon Coffee Morning. I'm Danny Jameson. And I'm Amory Batson. The world number one, the mixed doubles and the ladies doubles reign supreme on the last day of the championship. The final of Wimbledon, the men's singles championship. Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic about to take to centre court. Great excitement here. Anticipation. For the Serbian superstar, what a treat this has been. I think this was, if not the most exciting and thrilling finals I was ever part of, then definitely top two or three uh, in my career against uh, one of the greatest players of all time. Roger said that he hopes that he gives, gives uh, some other people a chance to believe that they can do it at 37. I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> he inspires me, for sure. That'll do it. Arms aloft. Ivan Dodig, Letitia Shan for the triumph at Wimbledon. Game set match. It is long. And the final title of this year's championship has been won by these two Shea Suwei and Barbora Striktova. amazing to watch that back isn't it just such a fascinating day and we should mention we're somewhere a bit different today yeah for today's show. Well, we've had to change positions because so today basically all of the broadcasters have been bringing you the tv coverage um they are well taking everything down and mm -hmm. putting everything away and packing it all up so we thought it's a bit safer we come downstairs instead and we've uh, we've commandeered the main interview rooms this is where all the press conferences happen they do where, indeed. Uh, where the champions were yesterday where novak came down after he won the title so we borrowed it just for just for the morning Speaking of Novak Djokovic, of course, he's won his 16th title now, catching up with Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer as well. Yeah, 20 for Federer, 18 for Nadal, 16 for Djokovic. He's there lurking in the background. And I mean, what a final as well. It was absolutely extraordinary. It was I had so much fun watching it. It was exquisite tennis and, and really entertaining. And the emotions, one minute swing from excitement to anticipation, nervousness, yeah, yeah. joy, hands up in the air, hands over eyes. Oh, amazing at the Spin Centre yesterday. Wasn't just, amazing. That wasn't the only final though either. No, it wasn't. I managed to miss the first two sets of that. So mm -hmm. I was watching uh, the boys final, yeah. uh, won by Shintaro Mochizuki, well done to him. Uh, I watched the mixed doubles final as well, Ivan Dodi and uh, Letitia Chan, well done to them. That was a, uh, that was not quite as competitive as I was hoping. They were really, really good, those two. Really good. And we had the, the women's doubles as well. Won by our, our friends, Aww. Shea Suwei and Barbara Stritzva, who is the new world number one in yeah. doubles as well. Oh, she better not, be today. better not be retiring. She's saying it might be her last year on tour. She's hit number one. She's peaking. It was extraordinary. <laughs> Well done to her. Absolutely. And of course, people in getting in touch join the story of our Facebook group telling us about their experiences. Yeah, I mean, this has probably been my favourite part of the tournament. Um, the, the Join the Story Facebook group has been brilliant. There's been so many really cool stories. Loved reading every single one of them. And obviously yesterday, lots of them because of the, the final. Christy Brown, one of them. Love the final. But I think this is something we can all relate to. Yes. The day after, not enjoying that, get a bad case of, the, of Wimbledon withdrawal. I hear you, I'm, Christy, on that front. Well and truly having Wimbledon withdrawal, and it was only only we were only here yesterday. Yeah, and it's so quiet around yeah. here now compared to yesterday. It's That's oh. right. Only fifty weeks until the next one. Yes, not far away <laughs> at all. Uh, how about this from Angela Turtle as well, also in the Facebook group, um, having a lovely scone and some strawberries. Oh, it looks delicious, Angela. A bit of afternoon tea. That's oh. the way to watch the final, isn't it? Gorgeous. It looks absolutely gorgeous that afternoon tea. Do you know what? I haven't had a strawberry for about three days. I feel like a fraud. <laughs> 
I'm jealous, Angela. I'm jealous. That uh, was great. That and and yeah, keep keep sending them in because I mean, I'll, I'm going to keep checking it for the next fifty weeks just to tide me over until Wimbledon starts again next year. I mean, I've, I've yeah, I feel a bit lost without it. And we've had some shout outs already. People watching the show this morning, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad people have joined us. Fifteen minutes earlier than usual as well. <laughs> yeah. um, just to give you a, a little extra bonus. Thanks to Ross for, for watching. And a great two weeks. Agreed. Yeah, it's been really, really good. And Elaine as well has loved every single minute. Great men's final, and she was so pleased with Simona yeah. as well. I think everybody was pleased with Simona Halep. She looked so happy as well yesterday. It was really, really good. So the picture's out from the Champions Ball last mm -hmm. night. Novak Djokovic looking very dapper as in per. his suit, where, holding the trophy in his hand. And I think everyone pretty much is saying, what a thrilling, fantastic match from two of the best players on the men's side on the planet, just battling it out. And I think... You know, Nick McCarville said yesterday Federer needed to win that first set and it wasn't to be, but we still got five sets. Yeah, it was sort of one, it was one of those days where you, you wished it was never end, really, yeah. wouldn't you? It was, it was the longest Wimbledon's final ever at, f at four hours, 57 minutes. That just beats the 2008 final, which obviously has gone down as one of the greatest matches ever played. I enjoyed this one every bit as much. You know, it swung this way and that. There were the tie breaks all over the show. Roger Federer was absolutely outstanding at 37 years old to hang tough like that mm. for five sets i mean it, either one of them could have and perhaps should have won um but yeah i mean novak just <laughs> we, were, we were talking about this this morning i think if you had to bet your life on any single individual player winning a tennis match no matter the situation i think he'd be the one that you pick he's just there's something about him he's yeah. clutch as the americans would say one of the best returners actually probably the best returner on the tennis circuit for sure and able to nullify as we said yeah. Federer's serve yesterday and I was I was on centre court and you, I had one side of Federer fans on me and Djokovic fans on the side of the other it was an amazing atmosphere really electric yeah, it was loud you say traditions as well yeah Novak getting the usual eat a blade of grass from the from the court does it every time don't know why do tell look. us why by the way he yeah, does that yeah he, uh, he seems to, to, <laughs> to enjoy it very wistful sort of look up after he uh, after he ate that one thing we pro we we've not mentioned, he was two match points down. Mm. Like Roger Federer could very easily have ended then and there. Pat Cash, who was uh, doing some commentary for uh, for some of the I think he was doing the radio in in the United Kingdom, pointed out tennis is one of the few sports where you can be down on almost all of the statistics. Federer I think won fourteen points more across the match and still managed to lose. And look, Djokovic showing that today. Federer playing better, but Novak winning all the big points. Yeah, He's made Federer a career out of it. Eight seven in that set and you and you think 99.9% .9 of the time Federer is going to see out of the match I mean honestly we so we were watching it in our in our little room with, with the rest of our team and the the noise was incredible people were up and down and they didn't know where to look it was just oh my word it was absolutely exquisite stuff um I think Patrick McEnroe I think put it the best I thought um honestly don't really know what to say just yet other than thank you yeah. to both players I mean it was that's a master class just yesterday. absolutely certainly, exceptional certainly it was so divinity. so good um, but look wasn't the only big performance we saw this last two weeks was it no no not at all one of the big performances for me was 15 year old Coco Goff from the States absolutely just Amazing. mesmerizing and just blew everybody away with her talent and I'm excited to see how much she's going to grow as a player and what she can bring on the ladies side too. it was amazing watching basically everybody here learn about her almost in real time most people probably hadn't heard of her um, two weeks ago. You were lucky enough to see her in qualifying. Yes, yeah, saw her at qualifying and she looked pretty good then, but I, we had no idea. That was the first round of qualifying, by the way. She had to win two more matches even to be here. Um, and then just everybody fell in love with her yeah. so quickly. She's such a great character, you know, feet on the ground. Ta talent is as the day is long. I, we were going to see a lot more of her around these parts. I said it all, all week pretty much, but... What an absolute star in the making. It was it was brilliant. And what, and what was for you your performance this evening? I mean, there's there's almost too many to pick. The the, the match I think I maybe enjoyed the most in person uh, were the boys' semi-finals. Um, the one in particular, the very first one between Shintaro Mochizuki and Martin Dam. Mm -hmm. So I watched the first set and a half where Mochizuki was flying. He was he won the first one. He I think it was two breaks up in the second one. I think it was about five two up. I had to go out and film something. <laughs> By the time I'd come back, it was into a third set. And then watching the rest of it, it was, oh my word, there were about five match points each. 
the one would would get ahead and then throw it away and then the other one would get ahead and then throw it away and then the other one would try and win it and then throw it away it was just the most exhilarating tennis and you know these these guys are like 15 16 17 years old and the the quality was was exceptional as i said watched his final uh, yesterday Shinsaro Mochizuki, the first Japanese winner um, at Wimbledon for the for the boys singles, he was brilliant. And our friends in the Japanese media, who are yes. next door to us, were looking really, really happy. I think they're um, they're quite pleased to see somebody come through behind Kane Ishikori on the men's side. Yeah, speaking of Kane Ishikori, he tweeted his congratulations to the young yeah. chap as well, which was which is fantastic. Now, did you know no out that out of the four Grand Slams, Wimbledon is the only one to have a museum? Is it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's the only one that goes into the history of the tournament and the wider story of tennis. And Danny, loving his history, went to meet the curator to find out some more. The Wimbledon Museum is absolutely spectacular and this is the man responsible, Adam Chadwick, the head of Museum and Tours. Now what exactly does that role entail? Well, uh, it entails looking after not only the museum, but also the library and a little bit of archive as well. So really all the collections of club. And then we look after the education side of things. And of course, welcome over 100,000 visitors a year to the grounds. Let's see some of the magnificent things that are on display. Absolutely, let's, let's do, do that. it. I mentioned the history and Adam, it doesn't get much more historic than this. Absolutely, it's one of the things I didn't really know about before I arrived. It's the original Wimbledon men's trophy. It's a magnificent history in the making. Wonderful. The museum is a lot bigger than it looks from the outside, so we've had a little sit down to recharge our battery. <laughs> We're sat on some history itself. We are indeed. This is actually an addition to the museum this year. It's a centre court uh, bit of seating from olden days. Mm. It's been refurbished and actually cut down so that it, it works in the space, but it's a favorite place for our visitors to sit and look. This is perhaps one of the quirkiest items on display. Absolutely, it was a late addition to the collection. Uh, it's the bolt that held the first roof truss as it went on to number one court, because if you can imagine, you put one truss up and there's nothing to support mm. it. So it needed to be fixed in place. And that bolt was capable of holding 100 tonnes of steel. So, as the sign suggests, mm. it's super cool. Oh. Adam, fashion is always a big part of Wimbledon. Probably not fashions like this, though. <laughs> this is uh, old school ladies uh, tennis wear. Yeah. It's, this is dressed for a pastime rather <laughs> yes. than a sport. Uh, the lovely chintz, ruffles, the great long skirts that they actually had a special uh, uh, implement to actually raise so they could walk <laughs> properly it doesn't really suggest that they were playing much tennis. How on earth would they be able to move in these? I mean, the weight must have been incredible. Yeah, with great difficulty. In fact, we've got a little machine here which shows you how ah. much they, uh, how much, how much the clothes weighed at the time, and it was actually double for women than it was for men. Oh, so you mentioned it was a, a journey through time, telling the story, and this is very much part of it. Absolutely, and this is where we are today, a day at Wimbledon. Indeed. Uh, a little display put in this year to celebrate the sights and sounds of the championships. And the queue as well, oh, lots of exhibits there. The well, queue. Where would we be without oh, the queue? Quite, it's a spectacular thing. And now we've reached the modern day in the costume. So what's going on here? Absolutely. Well, this is Trophy Man. <laughs> um, there's a particular fan who comes to Wimbledon every year. And he has for the last, I think, five or six years come in a particular costume on one day. And this was his last one, which was a mock-up of the gentleman's singles trophy, complete with, <laughs> with pineapple. The, pineapple. <laughs> the Venus Rosewater dish. What's the story behind the name? The dish is copied from a, an original piece in the British Museum and that was decorated with goddesses. And in the middle you'll have the goddess Venus and that's where the dish gets its name. Listen, it's an incredible way to end our tour of the museum. It's a fantastic place. If you are coming down, please do come and have a look because it is absolutely awesome whether you like the tennis or not. Adam, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. We'll let you get back to curating. were the women's costumes back in, was it the 1800s? No, it was like early part of this century, I think. Yeah, Goodness. 1800s, early part of this century. It, literally twice as heavy as the men. Like, much respect to, you know, Lottie Dodd and all them early champions, because they were wearing a lot of clothes. It was really, really, um, yeah, really heavy. I was struggling to lift it, just stood there. God knows how they play tennis in it. Museum looked amazing, though. All that history, the costumes, 
the records that have been broken. You had a look like you had a wonderful time there. Yeah, it's really cool. So it's just below the shop uh, by the main gates. It's, un it's like underground. It goes on forever. There's so much stuff. It takes you right the way through from the very first, as you saw, the very first trophy, um, which I, d I didn't know was different. I thought the one that we see um, is the, the only one, but no, they used to give it to you if you won it three times. But then as soon as that started happening, they'd be like, oh, it's quite expensive. So sensibly, they'd be like, we'll just buy one and give it to them um, every year. So yeah, they've got the original trophy, they've got the right, original gates, original seats, all sorts of stuff, the old costumes. It's really, really interesting. So if you are coming down, I think it's open pretty much all year round, not just during the championship. So come on down and have a look because it's, it's well worth a visit. And it's interactive as well. You can oh, actually yeah. have a go at returning serves and things like that. Yeah, I didn't have a go at that because, yeah, I've, I've not got a great record when it comes to actually playing ten tennis, uh, as we've seen these two last two weeks. Um, but, yeah, it was great. I mean, yeah, well well worth a look. And, look, thanks, everyone, for sticking with us and mm. getting working through the Wimbledon Blues this Monday morning or Monday afternoon, Monday evening, wherever you might be in the world. Mm -hmm. um, Laura, by the way, who I met a couple of days ago, yes. who had the Maria Sharapova tattoo of her favourite female player well she's got in touch she says she's gonna get her novak djokovic tattoo which is her favorite male player so as soon as she gets a bit of, a bit of cash then they get that tattoo to match it up on the shoulders in honor of his uh, his wimbledon win so love that idea laura. laura love that hope you had a great day as well <laughs> it was really good fun uh, karen as well as got in touch like uh, she's still wreck after the epic men's final you and me both karen um but little broken her heart is little broken for roger but she says he'll still be the, the greatest of all time no matter how many slams he wins yeah absolutely Fabulous stuff. Uh, so also all fortnight, we've been bringing you some of the lighter moments on and off court. And here are some of our very favorites. Which one of those is Dipsy, John? I have no idea. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is an absolute <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> Oh no, try again, try again. Oh, you just gotta laugh sometimes. <laughs> Hats are available in the club shop. Bjorn's not aging well, is he? He played here a while ago. <laughs> oh. I wonder if that's the first bottle. Cheers. You need to say, hold my beer. Bless you. Bless you. Gesundheit. <laughs> Peace. Ooh. She's uh, put her invisibility cloak on. <laughs> I apologize for these, but there we are. A special memento for somebody. Somebody with no scent of smell. Oh, there's a slice of melon. That's quite funny, isn't it? Great shade. Yeah, please, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't hit it near me. Oh, that's going to stink. Uh, ooh, didn't see that one coming. Oops. <laughs> that was an impressive ball toss. It's making all club players around the country <laughs> feel that much better. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do that. Is that a bacon sarnie? Bacon baguette? Looks good, though. Oh, oh, look at that. Go. He's, he's got it all there. happening. Okay. Nothing to see here. Don't push too hard or else it will go horribly wrong. <laughs> I speak from experience. Well Always done. when you've got your best gear on as well, isn't it? It's a way to win a point. It's not the time to be reading. Put it down. Got you this ticket. Suddenly, help us at hand. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, ouch. It's actually a very good kick. <laughs> Goodbye. 
Oh, ouch. Second time. Ah, yes, what a good idea. I don't think they have any drugs tests after the uh, seniors' matches. Across the two-week championships, there are so many funny things that happen. We've only got a short time to choose our favourite things. I mean, Teletubbies, hats, Marcus Baghdadis, the water malfunction happening, so the sprinkler funny. on court 15, Nick Kyrgios sneezing three times as yeah. well. Fantastic stuff. Oh, it's hilarious, honestly. That The sprinkler thing might be one of the funniest things I've seen. <laughs> the poor fella in the suit who tried to stop it with his foot <laughs> didn't do a great job. And then the court attendants sorted it right out. But yeah, very, yeah. very uh, amusing. Um, the social media stuff has been has been awesome as well. Uh, on the old Join the Story Facebook group, we keep going on about it. It's been, it's been so, so good. Alexander uh, Hestvold, Hestvold um, from Norway. You met this guy. I met him, yes. Yes, Abby and I went out to do some filming with producer Hannah and we met him and what caught our, caught our eye was his headband. Yeah, which he says he bought while he was at the tournament last week. He uh, watched the first round with his wife and his father-in-law, then went all the way back home to watch the final back in Oslo uh, in Norway, wearing all white and his headband, supporting Roger Federer, but hopefully enjoy the final. So, tack, for uh, putting that in the, in the Facebook group it wasn't the only sport that was going on yesterday no though, it wasn't because there was a Wimbledon final but there was also the cricket world cup final basically happening at exactly the same time uh, between England and New Zealand England did end up winning but they, they both went to basically their respective sports equivalent of a tie break I guess um, so the Wimbledon Twitter feed took a bit of time out to make sure that the ICC's Twitter feed was, was doing okay because a lot of people were trying to flick between the two of them and desperately try and keep up with, with both of them. Um, yeah, as he pointed out, things are a bit hectic here right now. That finished about sort of 20, 30 minutes after the Wimbledon final. Um, yeah, extraordinary day of sport. I like this. I mean, this sums up the emotions of your competitor's partner or girlfriend or boyfriend <laughs> having to watch your other half out on court and, the, and Merka, Federer... Great yeah. tweet, Andy. It's perfect. Sums up. Marry a great tennis player. They said it'll be fun. Yeah, this they was, said this was the least of them. She was doing a nut. The whole the whole five sets, pretty much. Was she was put through the emotional ringer while the fella is out on the court. Yes. I mean, Roger Federer is utterly unflappable. Poor Merkers, <laughs> doing it, having enough emotion for the both of them. I think. Um, but yeah, poor her. Yeah, definitely summed up the emotion that was on centre court yesterday. Tabitha on Instagram. This is a fantastic picture. And I love your dress, by the way, Tabitha. Oh, I mean, even I'm jealous. Um, she managed to get a photo by the fountain, which is really cool. I want one of them in my garden. But yeah, Tabitha managed to, to watch the ladies' doubles and men's singles wheelchair finals, uh, which we've, we've loved watching that. Yeah, I've been we have. Exceptional mixed doubles as well. Uh, and then on a the screen, watch the, the men's final. What a day of tennis that is. Oh, packed day of tennis for Tabitha. Yeah. Lovely photo. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Tabitha, this is one of your favourites, though. Oh, yeah. One of my favourite comedians and writers, Mindy Kaling, tweeting about Roger Federer speaking so eloquently after his defeat yesterday. Yeah, she's right about him being incredibly charming. My favourite line, I think, from the encore interview that he did, Sue Barker, who is obviously brilliant doing the interview, said something on the lines of, Roger, that's going to be a final that we'll never forget. And he just looked at her and said, I'm going to try and forget it. <laughs> I, I, my heart broke for him then. But yeah, he's, he's the only one who's going to try and forget that match. It was... It was absolutely amazing. Um, Sarah Garin as well on the uh, the Facebook group. Her and her friend Mary had a little party with a bit of Pims. Love the cupcakes. Some cracking cupcakes. The cupcakes, I have to say, almost on a par with the ones that we've had on the set. We've not got a room on a table in here for them yeah. this morning. But, yeah, I hope you saved some of them for us with the strawberries and cream. They look absolutely wonderful, oh, don't they? Oh, they look delicious, don't they? And the Pims as well. Ash Barty, world number one. Obviously keeping an eye on the tennis and the cricket yesterday. Yes. Former cricketer herself, mm -hmm. uh, she basically almost gave up tennis. Um, but yeah, how incredible is sport? Difficult to argue with that. Just ridiculous. Um, so we, the British Grand Prix was yeah, yesterday. Lewis I Hamilton. Mentioned that. Like all three, all three of them going on. It was uh, unbelievable. So yeah, probably a good job she got knocked out early. She should go and watch it all, like the rest of us. Um, and all the the wheelchair mm. stuff as well. Gustavo Fernandez here. Um, he ended up winning which was uh, well done to him. Brilliant tournament uh, for him. I was stood behind him uh, waiting for a lift about three, four days ago in the build-up to this. And the size of, uh, yeah, the, of these wheelchair guys, oh my word. Like, say. Yeah, the, the power and the, the, that they have to, to achieve to move that stuff around and also play tennis. 
Yeah, mad props yeah. to uh, the, Gustavo and the rest of the... The wheelchair tennis issue wheelchair has been guys. top notch. Lloyd Hargreaves, using get in touch, using the Facebook group, joined the story, talking about in 2013, how he met a group of guys and now they all come to Wimbledon every year, dressed in a particular way. Yeah, I mean, we see this every year, don't we? Just people meeting the queue, becoming best mates and then meeting up every single year. So Lloyd and his friends go in the tennis whites, the old school, like they wooden rackets by the looks of things as well a couple of them and I, I think i saw these the other day while they were while they were down here having a great time and as you can see being picked up by several of the uh, the old media uh, people as well so um look brilliant for them and um look any more stuff like that keep adding them to the group because I'm, I'm gonna keep checking it i'm gonna keep enjoying them um so yeah thank you so much for all of that yeah. now look we've had such a good time doing this show there's so many highlights very difficult to pick i think some of the best bits so we've edited together just a few of our favorites to show you here <laughs> Those lights, camera action when I step into the limelight. Easily adapted to the high life. Dress to impress like it's prime night. No big announcements on obviously this time out. Not from me. No. <laughs> Any, anything from you? <laughs> Indeed. Oh, we've got oh, oh, really to it down. I know I should support Andy Murray. I do. I do. I'm Scottish. But my favourite female tennis player is Maria Sharapova. I found another Danny to have a hit with. Here we go. The room starts to shake, so smooth if you blink, you might just miss the whole thing. I think Wimbledon without the queue isn't Wimbledon. Everyone's so friendly and positive and happy to be here. Tennis, us, Wimbledon. Yeah, I thought you guys should know about it. Oh, there we go. Look, that was easy. He is absolutely magnificent. I mean, should, how scared should I be? If you want to check my eyesight, go and check with the Hawkeye. They'll tell you. Pretty precise, I would say. Two of my teachers found out I play tennis. They saw my name in an article. I have uh, three other teachers that don't know I play tennis, and I'm not really the type of person to talk about myself. You get off to go and roam the grounds whenever you finish your mouth full of Andre. <laughs> Thirty fifteen. Nadal serving for the set. He was broken. A five all. I never thought I'd be working at Wimbledon because um, when I saw the job, my mum was like, apply, apply. And I was like, mum, I'm never going to get a job at Wimbledon. And my heart, my heart's absolutely bad. It's absolutely <laughs> How do I do? I think I'd give you high marks, buddy. In fact, I feel a little threatened. So this will be the last time I call you buddy. <laughs> I'm thinking you and I should get a selfie done together. What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that, Dominic team. You know what? I think I might get my nails done. Right, let me just check, is my posture still right? My arm's still right, Amy? Yes, looking good. Biggie, I think I'll make a rather good ball girl, actually. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Who knew the easiest way to make friends at Wimbledon? Just let the people eat cake. Roll on next year, roll on 2020 Wimbledon. Week. We're coming again next week. You can't get rid of us. No. <laughs> so many highlights for both of us over the two weeks. The fact we got to meet so many different people mm. who work in front of the scenes and behind of the scenes. Meeting Maria Chichak, one of the world's best umpires in the tennis circuit, but also chatting to Lauren as well as to Ella, who are going to be the flower girls leading out the ladies singles uh, competitors on Saturday, uh, fantastic. I love that woman at the end. I think that sort of sums it up. She was uh, coming back Ivy. next week. Oh, she was awesome. Um, I, I absolutely love the stringing. I'd never tried that before. Um, so we did it against the clock. And that, genuinely, Dominic team was was the the leader the leader of the time boards. And I did it. I beat him by about two seconds. What we failed to mention was that, that record lasted less than 24 hours because um, Nico Rosberg, the former Formula One champion, he rocked up literally the day after and like knocked my time off by about 15 seconds or something. He was far, far better. And I've not been back down to see if anyone say, else you need to go back and check. As far as I'm aware, second, I'll take second to Nico Rosberg. I'll take that. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, that was, that was really good fun. There's, there's almost too many to, to count. Watching Coco Goff on the hill, I know we've already, already mentioned her, but watching her on the hill with all the fans just going ballistic for this 15 year old Floridian girl who they'd never heard of a week ago just 
memories that will genuinely last a lifetime. And meeting Ruby the working dog as well. Yeah, I was a little her home. a star in her <laughs> own right. Honestly. For sure here at the championships. Yeah, they're lucky I didn't take her home. Yeah, I think she's I think still roaming around. To take her home. She was so gorgeous. Yeah, it was Matt. It was absolutely ridiculous. But unfortunately That is it. That's it. Uh, we've come to the end of the road. That is our Wimbledon over. Never mind. Never but mind. Like we say, there's only fifty weeks until the very, very next one. Um, look, we have to say a huge thank you to everybody who made this show possible. Producer to, Hannah, yeah, to Abby as Marcus, well. Joanna and Sophie Charlie. Who, behind the laptops. <laughs> yeah, to Charlie and to Tom who actually made it all work to make sure you can hear, you can see and hear us. Everything you've seen has been shot and edited by our wonderful videographer, uh, Abby. And the only person I think in the world who could keep us two under, under wraps, producer Hannah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a really, really fun show to be part of. And we've all, every single one of us absolutely loved it. And most of all, thank you to you guys. We couldn't have done it without you. Hope you've enjoyed the, the ride with us. Thank you for all the comments, all the likes, all the shares, all of the stories in the, in the Facebook group. We've loved reading uh, every single one of them and loved meeting several people who put them in. It's been absolutely fantastic. Oh, fantastic. It's been, yeah, just echo everything that what Danny just said, I echo too. I've not been practicing that all night, I promise. <laughs> anyway, as I say, that is it, unfortunately, for Wimbledon 2019. 50 weeks until the very next one. So we'll leave you for now with your 2019 champions. Wimbledon 2019, the 133rd edition. A tournament steeped in tradition. And of course, within the tradition, on the opening Monday, the first match on centre court always features the gentleman's singles champion. Oh, wait, wait a minute. That's curious. Absolutely amazing. Oh my word. That was special. Another seed bites the dust here at Wimbledon 2019. What might have been. And she's done it. And she moves on to the second week. Oh, Brilliant. Oh, that is outstanding. The fairy tale continues in her first Wimbledon. The most famous mixed doubles pairing in Wimbledon history. And the number one seed is out of this year's Wimbledon. Time waits for no man, Marcos Bagdatis. The end to a marvellous career. Wonderful from Simona Hannah. Svitolina jumps for joy on court number one. It's a stunning performance. Who can stop her? He's through to his ninth Wimbledon semi-final. And it's Roberto Batista Agut who's left it all out. Game Feather celebrates again in the evening sun on centre court. He has set up the semi-final every neutral wanted to see. Simona Halep earns her place in her first Wimbledon final. And the chase for history is still on for Serena Williams. A Lion King like roar from Djokovic. Yet another final here on centre court. That's away. What a contest. Roger Federer. He's into his 12th Wimbledon final.
finals day, the second Saturday of the 2019 Wimbledon Championships. Simona Halep is the Wimbledon champion. She has stunned the centre court. We've seen one of the great performances in a Wimbledon final. Great excitement here. Anticipation. And that's it. On a massive miss hit, Wimbledon number five for the Serbian superstar. What a treat this has been. The top seed triumphs and it can surprise no one.